User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugetastic.com. Hi, it's Mike with Ugetastic again. I'm sitting down with Michael Fakara. Michael has been very active in the CoffeeScript uh, community, um, even so much so that you've, you've been taking a crack at uh, doing a rewrite of the uh, CoffeeScript compiler, and he's done fundraising uh, through Kickstarter to to help support that. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down. Um, so uh, I'm going to ask you a question you've probably never heard before. Uh, why CoffeeScript? <laughs> why, 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 why use it or why am I into it? Why, why are you into it? What? How did you come to it? Uh, so I've been in the community for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, I, I, I'm interested in CoffeeScript because it provides a, a small but still significant advantage over JavaScript yeah. uh, without any uh, setbacks, really. It, it provides a uh, syntax for you to use that, that is uh, that better uh, describes what your, your intent mm -hmm. Uh, your, the intent of your program. Did you come to CoffeeScript through like uh, development, or were you just reading and like, hey, this is kind of cool. This is some of the JavaScript. Like, were you doing a project with it or something? You don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't remember getting into it. I've been asked that before, it, but just, uh, you I, saw it and you were just in love. I know it's around like summertime a few, a few years ago. Okay. Well, so I mean, to go from adopting. Uh, CoffeeScript to saying, "Hey, I'm gonna rewrite the compiler." I mean, that's a big jump. What 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 kind of led to that? Uh, so yeah, it, it was a, a, a few years of, of working on it. Really, that was, you know, I, I got into it. Um, I, I, the CoffeeScript was a very new programming language, just mm -hmm. like six months old when I when I uh, found it. And um, I, my first contribution was well, one of my first contributions was a. a a complete rewrite of the test suite because the test suite was just a, a very very simple and uh, it was not organized and uh, it was not done very well looking for magic numbers all over the place and yeah. you know, just not clean not not maintainable so just uh, made a little micro framework for, for, for them to use and, and rewrote all the tests and, and obviously added you know about about double the test suite at the, uh, at the time and um, with still the same test suite we're using today. That's, that's really interesting you mentioned that because I, I interviewed Charles Nutter and he kind of described uh, a, a kind of a similar path into JRuby uh, and, and that's seeing the project and contributing to it, mm -hmm. making it better, doing those, so it kind of goes into the theme of participating in the community by coming in and helping, yeah. doing those things that are messy and people kind of want to leave behind. But it sounds like you want way past that, much like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. one thing led to another. And, and Working on it all the time and uh, answering issues, mm -hmm. discussing uh, just language design, how we're going to move forward, mm -hmm. uh, what features will will and will not be part of the language, how you know, how we're going to represent them syntactically. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, all sorts of contributions, and you know, I've, I've been a uh, the, a maintainer. Uh, Jeremy gave me access for that for mm -hmm. you know since, since pretty early on because I was just so active. So get out there, <laughs> contribute to open source yeah. projects and. and yeah, your help will be appreciated. Well, and it sounds like you're also like a really early adopter. So it's still in an ad adoption. Like I, we've had conversations. I haven't quite switched over yet. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's getting really big, but there's still so much to go. There's a lot of people that uh, are either fearful or they say it's not worth it to me, or they just haven't even looked at it. Now you have uh, uh, an academic. Uh, Background with language design, PLT theory. Uh, so, uh, well, first off, what is PLT, real quick? Uh, I, I, I myself don't come from a comp side background. I'm mm -hmm. a developer by trade, not by training. So, PLT stands for uh, Programming Language Theory, and, and it's a uh, uh, program language. So, it's, it's this you um, study paradigms that are incorporated in programming languages, and uh, just programming languages themselves. If you're interested in in programming languages, interested. Yeah, in PLT. Yeah. Okay. So, so you you've you've studied academically and in in, de in depth the concepts that underpin 
language design and, and creation and what. So when you were looking at at CoffeeScript, um, you know, what, was there anything that was like jumped out at you like, wow, this is complete? Well, was it something that was pure and and, and pulled you in because wow, that was really good, or was it something like, oh, there's potential, but it's a real diamond in the rough? Yeah. Well, it, you know, the, one of the big draws is that it's it's built on on, on JavaScript semantics. You know, if, if uh, by default you can mostly assume JavaScript semantics for for your coffee mm-hmm. script, and uh, JavaScript has really 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 nice beautiful parts to it. Uh, it has some ugly things like width and eval, but uh, it has it has these these beautiful parts like uh, you know closures and, and uh, you know. It, you know <laughs> Um, sorry. Oh, uh, first, uh, 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 first class functions. Yes. Uh, I was trying to for parentheses. <laughs> so yeah, there's those yeah. semicolons. Yeah. Everybody yeah. loves. It. Yeah. But uh, well, okay. So with the you you were attracted to its underpinnings so that would be very flexible and something can run in a lot of different places. So you could build up a nicer language and kind of like building on the JVM where it's. A lot of the infrastructure and the hard part of getting that runtime out in a lot of places is already that battle's already been won. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so the word, I was thinking of the, the prototype system. I couldn't think of the word. Uh, well, part of the prototype yeah. inheritance. And yes. So, so we, yeah, we share the, the semantics. So, you know, member access walks prototype chain just like it does in JavaScript, and it's actually a nice feature that we want. So. We just take that we just reap the benefits by compiling one to one. Yeah. In case. Okay. So you you were attracted to working with with uh, uh, CoffeeScript, and you you're bringing some of uh, of a, a more of a rigorous approach because of your, your training to the design bit. What ultimately led to the idea of a rewrite? As as we kind of joked before, isn't there already a CoffeeScript <laughs> compiler? Yeah. Uh, so the the compiler has. Uh, some failings, I guess we call them. Um, the uh, there there's some features that, that people want, uh, like uh, source maps is a is a good example, uh, which maps your compiled JavaScript back to the original CoffeeScript, so you can do debugging in, in whatever your JavaScript debugging environment is, uh, as if you're developing CoffeeScript. And those would be really hard uh, with with the architecture of the, the compiler. The original compiler was uh, you know, Jeremy's first. Uh, First try at making a compiler, it was, it was very rough, and, and, and um, not trying to right. uh, take a dig at it or, or anything, but but it wasn't, it, it didn't use a, a, a model that allowed to allow for us to preserve uh, that source position information through uh, the compilation process. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, there are some basic uh, failings in just the overall design of, of the compiler that wouldn't allow us to do a lot of a lot of things. And of course, there were you know, 300 or so open bugs. That, uh, a lot of it with like uh, inconsistent parsing of the, the syntax. And um, you know, I just wanted to encapsulate fixing all of these things into so improve the integration with existing tooling, clean up some syntactical inconsistencies. And just also a lot of second second uh, is it the second uh, product improvements. Is you go through product one and it's okay. We find out everything that wasn't so good, and let's just fix all those those things. So it's it's round two. Yeah, it was like the first compiler was just a, a try to feel out how yeah. people like this, and like, they really like now we can really do uh, do it right this yeah. time. So you you started this, you know, obviously. Uh, you know, it's free software, but it costs money to create it, and time and, and effort. So it certainly costs a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, so you, you started this. Well, where did the idea for the Kickstarter come? Uh, I just, uh, you know, had heard that Kickstarter was in the news a lot uh, at the time, and I guess it still is. It's a big phenomenon. But um, yeah, I had heard people getting funded for for similar projects, and uh, I. I had had this idea for this rewrite in my head for a long time. I also had, uh, you know, I had ideas for it. I had published this manifesto of things that would change about the language as well. And a, a, an end goal of this compiler is that I would have a really good, extensible thing to work off of to write a language that is similar to CoffeeScript with the changes that I, I would make okay. if I uh, had full control of, of CoffeeScript. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I would love to get 
a, a compiler that, that is extensible and I can build off of, and that this is my shortcut to, to doing that. Okay. And so really, it was just a big selfish. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, a scratch the edge. It's, it's a scratch the edge, it's, and it benefits everybody. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you you launched the the uh, the uh, Kickstarter, and it, it succeeded your goals. Yes. I, it looked like you were over a thousand dollars past yeah. what the original goal was. I initially planned to do like a, a uh, yeah. X dollars per month that I'll be able to work on it. Right. But then, you know, depending on how successful it was, I didn't want to be indefinitely chained right. to the, uh, the project. So uh, I, I decided I, I would just fix it to a four month period that I would uh, contribute all my time to and I would uh, just bust the thing out. And, and uh, that, were, that period started in June and did end of September. So, so did, how did it go? Did it go well for you? Or? I think it's really successful. You know, yeah. the, the project is, you know, really popular. It's being used by a lot of people. It's being in, incorporated into uh, popular ID, and um, you know, it, it's it's seeing adoption. It still needs a little work. Of course, it needs a little polishing. I didn't get to 100% of the things I wanted to get to in the Kickstarter uh, by the time the period was over, but uh, at least like 95% of the things I wanted to yeah. do. That's better than most projects. Yeah, yeah, and um, my backers seem really happy about it. it That's good. Uh, just curious, uh, why I mentioned earlier about Martin Atkins, who had uh, done a seminar. He was doing a series of seminars on, on how to do Kickstarters. And one of the uh, pitfalls he described it is uh, in the first Kickstarter is uh, you know looking at, at the amount of money that you're going to need and just saying, okay, that's what I'm going to ask for. I, mean, I, I need twelve thousand dollars. I'm yeah. just ask for twelve thousand dollars for getting taxes and the cost of sending out the. Was it was that something you ran into or? So I made sure to remember taxes <laughs> and, uh, and how much Kickstarter takes a big portion of yeah. that for me. And so it was Amazon payments. Uh, so when yeah, it yeah, gets payments. to you, yeah, it, it's it is definitely less. But um, I, I didn't have any like physical goods or anything mm -hmm. I had to deal with. Which some people complained about. They said, you know, I'm, I'm backing this. Why, why don't I get anything? So it's kind of like a, a selfish response. But, but uh, really, what, what it was was a contribution to the, the community. Everybody benefits if just a few people contribute. Especially like uh, the corporate donations that we got. You know, that they're uh, making uh, such use of, the, of, of the, this tool and this language. Um, yeah, that it's it's worth it to them to if, if they had to buy it if it was paid software that they would be paying so much more. Why not just contribute uh, a small right, amount and, and then everybody will will benefit. The the fortunate thing is uh, everybody can say that's their responsibility. That's the other yeah, guy's it's, responsibility. It's always that guy. Yeah. 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 Game theory. Well, that you know, and nobody should contribute. Yeah. Uh, and you know just to kind of bring things around, uh, you know, we're here at Groupon and. Uh, Groupon is 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 a is a, is a your research partner for Coffee Scripts. I saw that in your in your description when I was looking oh, at right. a research fellow. Uh, research yeah. fellow. So yeah, he's a, uh, Groupon uh, did something special for uh, Kickstarter. Instead of donating like the other companies, but I was doing a, a few grants. Uh, they they said, why not come here and use all of our resources? We'll give you a few people that you know that that have worked in languages before that can you know, that you can go to. And, uh, for any advice um, and work out problems with. Uh, one of those was definitely Aaron Bedra, works right. on closure all the time. Who we interviewed before. Um, so you guys know Aaron Bedra? Yeah. Um, so worked with him a lot on it, and uh, I get to use their, their building, their, their computers, everything, and uh, they even gave me some money. Uh, so it was uh, very generous of Groupon. Oh, wow. Uh, and that's why I'm here in Chicago. I so I just moved down here for that. Yeah, so as part of it is, is Groupon feeding back into the open source community. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down. Appreciate Thanks for having me. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.